started. So, uh, welcome everyone um, to uh, Ruby Tuesday um, and JavaScript Penang number nine. So, uh, proudly brought to you by um, our KL uh, Ruby Brigade and JavaScript Malaysia. Um, this is our meetup page. So, you can RSVP on the meetup page and also Slack. Wi-Fi. So if you need internet access, here's the Wi-Fi to get you connected to the internet. Okay. So our sponsors. So this venue is sponsored by ACAT. Um, so let's introduce yourself. I think everyone introduced just now. So without further ado, we can go for the talk agenda for today. So we will have Ruby tracks, um, serverless Ruby, and then, oh, not whatever track, it's a JavaScript track for uh, React Oops by not me also. Something wrong with the slides. Okay. So I need to let me modify a bit. Right, right. Okay, so we will have intro to React Hooks by the second half. So um, let's get started. Start first, or okay, so um, let's go to it. Serverless Ruby. Okay, so um, serverless Ruby. So what is serverless? So um, for serverless, we do functions. We deploy um, functions to the cloud. So function as a service. So you heard about um, container as service or platform as service, but now we go to for another abstraction. We call it sub function as a service. So rather than deploying the whole app to the cloud, you deploy a piece of function that you need to use and in um, serverless Ruby we have a runner so a runner is a, is a secure stateless always running state of our compute unit capable of accessing any function code instantly at the moment of execution eliminating cold start time so um, compared to other technologies like platform or service and also server as a service, like virtual server, you will need to start your server and then your app starts to reboot and everything starts to work. For this um, serverless means once you deploy, within seconds or less than a second, you get replaced and immediately run without downtime. So it handles everything for you. You don't have to do like, um, deployment planning or whatever because it just everything is handled by the uh, service provi provider in this um, context is fast ruby so let's see the architecture yep. is it big? so um, we identify it with colors um, we use the example of containers versus uh, serverless runners. So if you see on the third layer, there's a container engine, most likely like Kubernetes or Docker to handle your application. Now we further abstract it. We use runner engine. So we don't deploy app. We deploy functions by functions. So each function sits on the runner engine. There is a defined way of how to write a function so that they can accept and run it on the runner instance or the runner engine. So um, runners are unique in three ways. So ops free. So means that um, you don't have to do um, test builds and um, 
deploy separate from the process. So as a developer, you just need to write your code. You need to run some uh, san okay, sanity tests before you deploy. If it fails that test, you, you don't deploy, something like that. But you don't have to configure your servers or whatever pipeline, deployment pipeline that you need. Um, no cold start. No cold start means you can build and run from simple functions to fully featured web application. So you don't have to care about downtime and all this stuff. And simple billing. So for this case, it's $5 per runner. If you know like Heroku, you have worker instance. So each instance is $5 regardless of usage. So you can abuse it. Lah. It's $5 and then you can run multiple APIs. Um, let it call trigger multiple stuff. It's just one call out and then it's flat $5 regardless what you use. Okay. Um, why have um, function as a service? So to conclude, like we have abstracted um, the infrastructure. We don't need to have service. We don't need to have DevOps. We don't need manage our own containers, you just focus on writing your app. Dynamic scalability uh, function perform on demand. When you click, you trigger, it just runs. If you write an app, you need, might need to go through certain stuff to get it deploy and certain credential and all those stuff. For this, it's just, once you hit that URL, it'll run. Um, and the last thing is cost saving. So if you want to just deploy one server to just build a landing page or email trigger why you want to spend a whole server where you can do it in just one function because it's cheaper right makes sense in um, the feature wise if you don't use too much of a server so here, here are other steps to try it out um, if you want to so from for this step we are using rpm so ruby virtual machines um, and for serverless, it only supports uh, 2.5.3 and above. So other than that, there's no support because it requires just-in-time compilation. I think that's one of the features, new features that supports uh, serverless. Um, then you install uh, FastRuby. Um, first, you need to create a workspace. So um, for this particular service, it's separated by the service provider and your workspace. Then the next thing is your function. So um, later I can demo how to do it. And then uh, Ruby, uh, fast Ruby list workspace and list out what you have created on the server. And then fast Ruby new landing page. This is where you create the function. So new something means you create a new function with what runtime. You need to specify the runtime to run off. And then you CD to that folder, then you bundle install. Okay, so explanation. I'll explain the handler, the RB, um, index.html um, spec. Let's open the code. is what you see um, plus okay I'm good project fast ruby so um, I created my own workspace so landing page first we'll be seeing the handler rb so when you do a fast ruby new landing page it will generate a file called handler.rb so what it does is it gives you a template on how you should write your function so everything will start at dev handler event 
and then it will show you the explanation of what is that event. There's an event body, event context, event headers, query params. So all these are your requests, your HTTP requests that get uh, that the user sent to the server. And then you can do a function response. You can render a HTML or YAML or a JSON and all those stuff. So for me, I'm rendering a HTML where I read a file called index.html, right? So let's get to it, index.html. So this is just a HTML static file, right? It's nothing much, right? It's just uh, do a, it gets a styles, CSS, and then there's a input field, uh, the input field to put in your email address and once you submit, you go to a thank you page, right? Okay. So next thing is spec. So if we go for the specs, so this will be generated for you also in the template, but you can modify it so that you can use. So for me, I will describe that it should return as a string. Spec body to be a string. This is just a. I just want to make sure it returns something when I trigger it. Right, so you can define a lot of ways. You can find um, a particular text that you're supposed to return. You can find a particular script that you should return certain stuff lah, to make sure that when you hit that uh, URL, you get what you're supposed to get. So let's go back to this. Explain how to deploy, right? How to deploy so this service is free out of the box is free and let's do deployment so we do make sure you need to be uh, in the folder though so if you are in the workspace it won't deploy because it only deploys where when you are in a folder of a function why Let's see if I do this dot db deploy to space. So it says that it cannot find this YAML. Okay, let's see the landing page. So there's a fast Ruby YAML here. So it requires this file in order to know where to deploy. This. So this is the configuration when you deploy, right? So we do it again. Space. So this is how it deploys to the fast Ruby server, and then it gives you an endpoint. So this is the endpoint. This is the page that you just now see. So this is what we do, uh, what the fast Ruby work in serverless. So it just serves the index file for you, right? And if you see at gmail.com, something like that. Then you can see that because I I done the thank you page. So it's if you haven't done the thank you page, let's move to the next slide. So how we create another function? Now you create one function, right? How we create another one? So it's basically going back to you. You need to go back to the work workspace. You can see here I already have thank you page. So what you did is fast Ruby new your function what's your function name then your runtime what you want to run on it and then you cd to the file and then let's check out the code thank you page it's the same thing so let's go to handler first thing you need to go to the handler and then you can see that I'm having ERB here what ERB means is embedded Ruby. So you can write your HTML file 
in Ruby. You can add a Ruby um, syntax into your files. So we do event query params. So it means we are taking query params from the event. Okay. Yep. And then we put it into a parameters, then we put it the parameters into the file. So let's see what is inside. Thank you. HTML. Oh shit, this is big. Okay, so for those who know Ruby that if you want to embed Ruby, you need to do a arrow bracket and then it equals to then the parameters. So this is um, how you embed Ruby into your files. Right? So the specs too. So um, you can do handler specs. I'm just doing the same thing. So let events where I put in a query parameters. I just want to test out whether my function works. I need to mock it. So I put in the query parameters. Then I expect something. So here I can say that I expect the name to be there. Right? From just um, a simple example, I just make sure it's a string. Nothing much. So. Hmm? Yes, it's a R spec test. Correct. It's a test. So, same thing here. Let's see. Yes, if you are using a parameter in your page here, you need to test it, right? So you need to put in a test file to make sure it actually works. You can skip the test, it will just deploy. Then it's not by luck, if it breaks, then it breaks. So, uh, it, it happens sometimes, yes, it will happen sometimes. So uh, we deploy, let's do a deploy again. So to deploy something like this again, so it starts deploying to the server. So you can see that it's very similar to what you do in Heroku. Heroku is Git based. So once you push it, it goes to Git. Then there's the hook to trigger a Git build. For this one, you just deploy your code to the server directly. And then it handles everything from there. So let's say go. Yep. Um, yep. mm -hmm. So this one is, if you see the pricing, is actually still uh, in beta mode. It just released this year, so it's very experimental. Um, because serverless is just getting hyped, starting from JavaScript, then Python. Now Ruby is picking up, so um, they are still figuring out how they want to do it, but for here you see that um, it says that um, your request must be fast, if not um, something on the charges. So if you run long, too long, and they might charge you extra. So they are still figuring out that stuff. For Amazon, it's very expensive. If your function runs too long, you charge crazy high because um, they don't expect you to run too long. If you run too long, you just better just spin up a server. Uh, this is for quick usage. Uh, for free tier, you are have you are entitled for one free runner per month, and then uh, cloud sync managed infrastructure means you don't have to handle all your server. You don't have to know what is a server. You just need to code and then deploy. That's it. So they save you out all the stuff. Yep. Yes. So Lambda, you still need to configure some of the stuff, right? You need to push. There is a file size that you need to hit for Lambda. There's a limit. 
that you can host. For this one, they don't set a limit because it's still new. They look for people to abuse it until they found some loophole. <laughs> so uh, please use it while still free. Uh, but yes, this is one of the things. Yep. Um, Python, Django, no, they, I don't think they have one services for Python and Django, but it's well supported by GCP, Google Cloud uh, Platform, and also Amazon Lambda. You can deploy your Python there, no problem. But this one is specifically for Ruby, if not mistaken, because as the website is says, it's fast Ruby, so it's supposed to run on the Ruby. Um, if you want to do JavaScript and Rust, there's one called uh, new. What is that already? Uh, next. Hey, is it next? Forgot already. There's one this morning you sent me. Now for SH. Now for SH. So this is also a serverless um, service in JavaScript and in Rust. So now you can deploy Rust and JavaScript on serverless. So for Python, you are bound to two options. I think Azure also supports, so you can deploy to Azure too. Um, so that uh, Rust. Yeah, this one. So this is Rust. Um, there's a web web scraper that can run super fast. Uh, if you know Rust, then you know that's a very efficient language to use. But yeah, that's Rust. Um, you can take a look at it if you want to. Um, let's go back. So use case for serverless. So if you have a front face page, like a landing page with third-party APIs, you have multiple APIs. You don't want to spend your money on a droplet, like $5, just to host your server. You need to configure your firewalls. You need to configure your server to handle traffic and all those stuff. And then you will bill based on your bandwidth. You can use serverless because everything is a big charge. And then you can connect it to APIs so you don't have to build your own uh, login page you just find a third party login page to do you don't have to have your own database you just find a uh, API uh, database as a service you just hook everything up and then just deploy bootstrap it launch it very fast you don't have to handle everything simple minimal and then get it done so another one is aggregate data for multiple API without exposing the credential so sometimes you have API keys. If you host it on a static page, you expose everything, right? Sometimes uh, if you don't know how to handle, there's way to handle it. But um, for this um, serverless Ruby, it's hiding behind a service platform. So you can put your API keys there. So once it triggers the endpoint, it will go to your um, API endpoint with the credential without you seeing it. So you still can access to like Google off with your API key, Twitter bot or whatever. And you're still able to aggregate those data and display in your Ruby um, app. Um, simple and single use feature. Like I said, if you want to have just one feature to launch to the user, why buy a server? Why build an app? The full feature app like, means you need to bootstrap everything like the Django or in uh, Rails. You don't need to, you just need one thing and to let your user to start using it. Right? You can use it. And it's very cheap. Um, trigger multiple APIs without handling any server. Same thing. If you hook, if you use multiple third party services, you don't need to handle servers credential like um, normal server deployment requires you to have a um, docker image or a puppet you heard of puppet uh, salt stack uh, Jenkins all those stuff 
don't have to know, don't have to care. So one person developer can build the whole thing and deploy it in one day. Simple. Why you want to spend extra time, extra human power, extra money to do things that's so simple, right? Um, I think this is the reference. Reference, yeah. The full reference is here. Um, you can get it. Let's see whether I can open the link. You, um, I get all my resources here. It's from their blog. Um, so it says February 17, 2019. So it's very new. Uh, please try it if you want to do something simple with Ruby. No harm, right? You don't have to learn the full Ruby stuff to just do yourself, do your feature or deploy anything. So yeah, look at it um, and see what serverless can do for you um, compared to traditional um, service deployment. Okay. Any question? Yes. Uh, what is the difference between fast and also fast? Fast and fast. Fast. Oh, platform as a service. So platform as a service, P A S, um, is. Yes. So, uh, platform as a service. This is a definition from Wiki lah. Um, the example I will give is like Heroku, Beanstalk, Amazon Beanstalk. Um, for Google is Cloud Engine. So, um, you deploy your app. It will figure out how to manage your resources, the credentials, the access point. Um, all those stuff so you don't have to own your own server you don't have to configure nginx if you deploy a virtual server you need to know what is nginx right you don't have to know that you don't have to know firewall you don't have to know um, ssh uh, not ssh uh, ssl certificate stuff you just do your app deploy so platform my service um let's see i think that's also some open PAS where you can use uh, I think it's uh, Rainborn yep. so Rainborn is from China it's a replication of Heroku that you can fork out and deploy yourself so um, I found this when they do it in China um, it's interesting because normally when you see this platform is coming from the US side so this is purely from China and they have some cool stuff they are trying to replace um, Kubernetes they have their own style of managing containers managing their DevOps stuff right so you can check it out it's free you can deploy yourself maybe you can offer it to someone else using this service right who knows? It's fun to see this stuff. Any more questions? So is there a database that you have to use that is Yep. So uh, you mean for pass or for serverless? For serverless. Serverless. So we have what's that called already? Firebase. So this one is just um, database as a service. You just connect to it, you write to it, and then when you need data, you just call it, it will give you back the data that you need. So that's like an API? Yes. APIs to handle database. So you use the uh, external yep. storage and uh, yes. database? Yes. So you use services to build your whole app. You don't have to waste time on how to manage load balancing and all those stuff. You take out the sysadmin part of headache. If your server is down, your database is down, oh shit, the whole thing doesn't work. But if you pay for it, you will get a SLA that this service is always up 99% and uh, it's easy to use and you can sync the database with your mobile apps. So if you have mobile apps that want to connect to the API, just directly connect to this 
external DB rather than going to an app, then going to a DB. So it depends on preferences. For fast rollout, this will be good. Um, if you scale very big, it depends because you need to balance out your cost. If you can pay that cost, yeah, why not just do it? Sometimes in business, you need to justify your cost. Then it comes down to if you hire one person to do server versus you use that money to put on this external service, whether it will balance. Yeah, that's a cost calculation part. Okay. Any questions? In serverless general also can. Okay. No, no, then we can move on to JavaScript track. Right, Jen. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, hello everyone. So, my name is Jia Yi. Uh, I'm a software engineer from TBX X3. So, mainly I will, um, I'm focused more on front end development. So, may I ask any React developer here? Good, okay. Have you tried hooks? Have you tried React hooks? Um, I haven't. Okay, sure, no problem. So, um, basically, today I will uh, demonstrate um, what is React hooks. And uh, while you don't understand React, I can explain a bit about what, what is React. So React is a front-end library that developed by Facebook. Uh, it used to develop um, your web or your mobile. So previously, they used React to, uh, for web only, but now they have React Native for mobile apps. So you can code one code base you can deploy to two platforms, which is Android and iOS. So let's go. Okay, so why hooks? You might ask. Okay. Okay, um, React has a problem that um, it's hard to use the stateful logic between the components. Okay, so you will know um, we can't use those because of a uh, reusable component in React. So um, some component you like, some component you got input and the label so different designer will like got a um, different uh, demand for the styling those of things so you can't use that the component so basically you will see those uh, rubber tail like this is very hard to debug and track uh, in the react uh, developer tools and you can use render props or high order component there's a coding pattern for for so solving this problem but Still, you have to restructure your component in order to solve the problem. So, second thing, okay. React component, you got component lifecycle, which is, you can see uh, those uh, every, 
every function or every listener you will run in component bit mount even though they are not related to each other so you got the component bit mount let me explain what is component bit mount the component is bit mount is like when you go into the page right the first thing you run in this is called component bit mount so when you exit the page the web page not, not the, the current page the component will amma will run so let's say you got an example you want to run a timer on the web so basically you will run the timer event listener here so after you exit the the component that's uh, you need to unsubscribe the timer in order to prevent the memory leak if you don't add the unsubscribe uh, function into the component amount so basically the timer will run at background so it might cause your memory problem like your memory will full and then definitely your browser will crash so this is how this uh, react component effect will so component update is kind of like uh, in react we got state and prop right so you want to man you want to monitor this state of props and then in order to do something so you write some code into component bit update it's similar to if you have a mobile development experience it's kind of similar to your online some, some kind of thing so it have it have it said you got the same effect in react so this is the current react problem the third one okay classes um esx class you can use esx class in uh, in react so that's why you extend the react component into this class so basically you can do all the effect here but i mean for those uh, some javascript uh, developer they don't understand how this work uh in hand you like example handle handle it you can't see on quite cheap like this function you have to uh, add a this add a handler here to buy this and in order you can use this in this component so react hook got this solution that later i will show you okay so before you start react hook uh, make sure you update your react to the 16.8.3 version and these two if you use yarn you can use yarn to upgrade your react, react dom or npm also can so the rules of react hook so don't call react hook in the condition group loop and nested function so give undi unconditional love to react hook means that don't later i'll show the example for this so second rule is only call hooks from react function okay and react hook is 100 percent backward compatible to your old uh your old component so please don't rewrite all your old react class component to hooks in it, it, it is meaningless so so let's see the code example okay oh yeah so big now and then i have to reduce the size okay okay so basically this is the the I will demonstrate uh, what's the normal component look like and how the React hook look like. So let me okay. So what I want to do now is I want to monitor my uh, this browser width and browser height. Okay. So guys, you can see if I readjust the uh, the windows uh, the browser window, it can't reflect right. So I want to do it now. So basically, uh. I will go to the my responsive component. So my responsive component inside got two things is handle height and handle width. So let me wire up the handle height first. Okay, as you can see, this is the initial state. I set the height, which is the Windows inner height. So you can see the initial value is 503 pixels. So I want to adjust this height and then the value will change, right? So uh, hold on. Uh. Like, hmm. okay. So the same thing I will try to call component bit mount. So I will add a window dot 
event, lis at event listener, which is the event listener called resize. And then this dot, um, yep, I want to reference to the function called this dot handle type. Everyone can see the code. I think I should move, move, move it smaller. Okay, come here. Size the windows. Okay. So, so I will create a handler height. Handler height. So handler height. Every time the handler height, I will set state, which is I want to change the state, the height state here, in order to reflect from here. So right, I call this stop set state. Set state. And then it's called height. It's a window dot inner height so you can, you can see if not mistaken when i readjust my window oops not work why let me see window dot inner height yes correct Am I holding the wrong thing? Oh no, let me fix a while. Set state height window dot inner height window dot inner height. Doesn't work. Mm. Let me see what what's happened. Handle height. So when at window that at value for all resize. And I set it like this. Okay, now it works. Wait, no. Hold on, give me one minute. Sorry, that's why. I mean, because of using the function inside the component, so you have to buy this event. Sorry, I, so you have to buy this. That's why I can't use the handle height. Is like this. Ah, yeah, 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 this. So I have to add the event listener. Uh, no, I have to buy this listener. It's called handle height. So this dot handle height equals to this dot handle height dot find this. So if I'm not mistaken, it's able to work now. Hmm. Nope. Handle height. Oh yeah. The parenthesis. Yeah, now it works. Sorry. So you can see the height is working now. Yeah, so in in normal React component, if you if you want to use the normal function inside the component, you have to bind this. So in order you don't want to use this, there's another way you can use the arrow function to settle, which is something like this. So you don't need to write bind and you're still able to work the uh, the the effect. So let's wire up the last one, which is the width. So same thing happened here. Uh, I want to I want to add a component component dip mount. So same thing. I want to window up. Let's just copy all the code here. 
function something here. So component will mount within mount so called handle width and this is can call handle width. So we know the inner width is called width. Okay. If you are not mistaken, this I know I forget to add a bind again. So I have to bind this this dot handle width equal to this dot handle width dot bind bind this. So I able to work my width. So as you can see, if I change my width, the value is changes. So um okay after I you can see these two example is how uh normal React component work. So um sorry, I still got one uh thing I haven't added which is the core component will amount. Component will un Amount. So component will amount normally is we have to remove this event listener after I will exit the the pages. So remove event listener resize. So this dot and the width. Same thing goes to the height one. So I still add the component amount. So this this dot handle height. So after I exit this page, definitely component amount will to run. So this is the normal React component, a uh, React O class version. So let's look about hook version. Okay. 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 Same thing. I. You want to write a responsive width in React Hook. So the first thing you have to add the library from React. So you can call use state and use effect. Use oh, let me see. use effect. Okay. So I write a function. I can write a function called handle uh, my ah let's just copy all the code here. My responsive component to handle height. And we will see what's the difference between. Okay, normally so this is class component, right? So. React Hook able to let us use a hook in the function component. So let's change this to function, which is function. So no need render, just return. Okay. So the handle height also changed to function. No constructor, no state, no component in mount, no all the all these things. Okay, let's set, settle the handle height part. So, in React Hook, right? Uh, you want to define a state. So, you just call const constant, and you call. You can define a height and set height. And then use state and then window dot inner height. Okay, let me explain this code from you. Is okay, uh different from the class component, uh you can use you need to use use state to define the height and set height. It's the same thing with the previous one, it's a set state and the initial state. So U state got the argument which is the you can put the initial value inside the U state. So you can see this kind this array bracket inside got two value, right? Yes, it's actually a JavaScript 
technique called destructuring, which is the destructure the use state function, and then you define your name, your uh, your state, and the set state value inside here. Okay. Then after we uh, define this set state, uh, this this uh, this state, right? So we have to return. No, no, no. Haven't yet. Handle height, which is you want to monitor the height. Okay. So from go back to the handle height, right? You can see the you got so much effect, which is the component demand, component amount, and handle width, right? You have to combine these three functions into the handle height hooks function. So the second library, the second function we need to use is use effect. Okay. Use effect is a function. It can you can uh it can be run when you first start initiate initiate uh, initial initial sorry to start this handle handle height. So same thing. So I just copy the component demand into use effect. Okay. So basically, component demand is a use effect. Okay. So how to handle the component the amount part? The component amount you can see here. Okay. Basically, use effect um, got the return argument. Uh, you got you, got, you have to re, uh, you can return something. Which is you can return a function. Okay. That's it. So this is how use effect in React Code. So basically you got uh, you have to write all the component did mount component amount. It basically goes to one function called use, use effect. If you have any question you can ask. I know I mean so if you got use uh, you got use React for development, and then you will know uh, this is how this works. So, and another thing is that uh, basically use effect got another argument is called uh, the second argument. So you can monitor the height. This is the same thing with your component bit update. So you definitely not need no need to define here. You can just you can you can call another use effect and then to monitor to monitor the height. So basically what another use effect run, it will monitor the height. So the height changes, the use effect will run. So this is how uh, use effect work in React. It can become your it can become like your component did update thing. Okay, we haven't done yet, so let me remove this. Okay, so I will return something, which is uh, I want to return it here, which is my render here. Okay. Okay, I doesn't monitor the this state. I just monitor height here. What happened? Okay. So handle height should be this. Can you see? Can't see the handle height. Oh, I doesn't reflect my responsive component here. Let me wire out my function first. So I got one function which is when the which is a function called set height handle height uh, set height. So set height to window dot inner height.
so sorry, I got some mistake here. Let me check. Never mind, I can show you another version, the complete version. So you can see, um, go back to my, oh, oh, I do it wrong way, I know what happened already. So I shall return the height. Oh, okay. So, um, under height. constant set height so which is I can use in my custom hook so basically it's like something like this. Okay, um our use with uh, use window wave will handle the handle the resize with set wave, so it will return the width. So in your responsive component you can call the custom hook to in order to get the width and then uh, show the width out here. So basically it's like um you can Create your own custom hook. So we have got the rule for the custom hook is called you have to start the function with use. So uh, if you want to create your own custom hook, uh, yeah, naming by use first, and then the use window height and width. So same thing, you can see the code structure is different from the class component. Is any question here? Seems like for me to really have a question. Error, right? Take care of the error? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, actually, uh, it doesn't uh, related to for me. Yeah. It's like using the React hook. The advantage of React hook is you can extract your component logic into a custom hook. So, in previously we used the React class component. We have to like use a high order components, render props to solve this kind of problem. But now you got hook, so you can write purposely write a stateful logic component, and then you can share across your um, component base. So you don't need to write uh, rewrite everything. So basically. What's the good in React code is it reduce your code code base. Uh, it, it, you don't need to write so much code as it and can achieve the same effect. Any question? Thank you, Dan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, move to the next one. It's called five tech tips. So means um, anyone from the crowd can give any tips, any tips in any technologies, whatever that you think can help fellow developers in doing their things much more efficient, much more faster, 
or any new stuff that you found on the internet that you want to share just anything because we have beginners here we have people that just start to learn so any resource will help right anything anything to share anything maybe don't have hmm? Wish P U G. This one? Alexa. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, is an extension for on Chrome that you can debug your web page. Let's see whether they have something to play. They should have. Ah, okay. So it's an extension to the Okay. So for UI, if you want to design a web page, you want to test it out directly, try it out. Um, uh, yeah, you can directly change, right? Change color. How to change color? Can I? You know, maybe I'm not using Chrome. Right? Type by all. This one. Or this one. And, uh, ooh, okay. Yeah. So it's good if you want to do some UI editing. So you don't need to know how to code. Find a, a designer to just design your page beautifully using this extension. Yeah. True. You can go to a web page that you like. Just modify it and then pick the post code, right? You just inspect elements, take down the code, and use it as your own. Okay, good tips. Visbug. So, Visbug is one. Uh, anything? Anything that you want to share? Hmm? Tutorials. Tutorial point or tutorials point. This one? Yeah. Okay. So what about it? Okay. So you can learn um is it free? Yeah. Yeah. So anything that you want to learn on technology stuff or more than technology, right? Or you know, should be or just yep. Anything programming related. To respond, yep, can learn from it. So that's second tips. Good tips. Any more? Any more tips? Hmm? Netlify. Okay, Netlify. So you can deploy your static apps, right? So if you build your own front end, you package into JavaScript, you deploy a static files, it will live there and it's free. Right? And it's CDN. I think Netlify yeah. runs on CDN. So the payment is for what? Hmm? The payment. payment is for the pay the other Yeah, other advanced feature. It's just like a server hmm. Whatever you deploy there, they just host your files. Technically, if you were just static file, yes. Static file. 
Yep. No, you need to push. You need to have a folder, then you deploy it. Yep. Hmm. So it's free for one user. You can try it if you want to deploy something statics. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, check this out if you want to use, and it's powered by HTTPS, so you don't have to worry about SSL. This one is a serverless hosting. Yes, you can say hosting. Yes. Yep. You can check it out. Mm. It can. You don't have to handle your VPS. You just deploy and it runs. Yep. So this is good if you want to just static box. No backend. This one no backend. Yep. It's API based. So. Yes, you need to handle your credential carefully. Don't expose your credential. Because once you put in a static file, people can go in and yeah, look at the credential. So there's a way to handle it. Need to read. There's a way to handle it. Okay, so that's tips number three, right? Three. Two more. Two more three. Any tip tips? Tips and tricks. Anyone? No one? Really? No tip? No? Nothing? No tips? Any from JavaScript? Yep. Um, hey, uh, transfer.sh. What.sh? Dot transfer.sh. Dot transfer dot yeah. Okay. Maybe let me try it. Yeah, it's working. Google see whether they change it. No, they haven't changed it. Uh, yeah, there might be something on. It's open source, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe you can go to the open source page and see what's doing. So it's doing command line. Uh, supports S3, G Drive, and any storage provider, right? So you can upload the file to there. So you immediately able to see from yeah from that page. It's a command line tool. Not mistaken. <coughs> yeah, you can check it out. It's open source. Um, hey, yeah, thing is up. Good. So, uh, yeah, the site is yeah some they need something to run. So. So um, check it out. Um, it's free. It's like the tools that you upload the file to your um, storage host. I would say like S3 is a place where you can yeah, store it. Not even S3. If you if you're just inside your S3 box, you wanna get a file to save your computer without using an S3 But at first, you need to configure the API code to link to transfer SH or no need? Uh, no, no configuration. Just oh. Should be directly to transfer SH. Then, right, you need to configure and then download Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Nice. So, that's uh, transfer SH. Um, for me, another tips. So, um, if you use Linux, there's a tool called MDR. Um, normally, I use this to check. The website or internet when it's down. Um, 
there's a tool for DevOps normally. So you run, it runs on the trace route to see how many hops you go to reach your destination and then whether there's a packet loss in between. And then how many seconds, how many response time. Um, this is good if you don't know where your website is, like which route it do, does. Because previously we do CDN, so we need to trace our routes over the world, whether our routes are optimized and all this stuff. So you can see where your website is, whether it's in um, Singapore Exchange or Hong Kong Exchange or Japan, or it routes you to LA, then back to whatever. So you know that, okay, this CDN traffic is shit. I need to change one or something like that. Or your internet is just bad. You will see somewhere like this TM, you see a lot of drop packet, then you know, oh, it's TM gateway having issue. Yeah, so MTR can remember that is a Linux tool. So five tips. We're done with five tips, and we just it's nine o'clock only. Never mind. Speaker for next month. We need speaker. Speakers, volunteer, anyone, anything. We have three tracks: Ruby, JavaScript, and whatever track. Whatever means really whatever. It can be public speaking, growth hacking, how to plant a tree, whatever, just whatever track. So that um, non-technical people can come and share also. Business side, how to grow a business, whatever. So we have three tracks. Um, any takers, it's next month. It's the second Tuesday of a month, the month, uh, which is, second Tuesday is 9th. April 9th. Any takers? JavaScript, Ruby, volunteer. No one, really. If you want to speak, come uh, to meet me, talk to me. We need speaker because every time in the meetup you can see me talking. Yeah, so hopefully we will have new people. If you are beginners, that's the best because we have beginners in the room. You can tell them like how you start to learn your programming, how to start learn this tool. We will help beginners to start learning so that you have partners to code together, right? If the knowledge is coming from a beginners, it's easier to absorb for a beginner. That's the theory, lah. right? So don't afraid to come here and speak. Any levels are welcome. <laughs> Everyone have knowledge more than another person because you are special in your field, right? Shout outs, any hires, any announcement, any events that you want to share or any party also can. Uh. Anyone doing party? No, okay. Hmm? Which one? Magic 4? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So uh, Magic will have events. You can Google for Magic Cyber Jaya events if you want to know their calendars. It's online. Yeah. So everything is scheduled online. It's in Cyber Jaya, not in Penang. It's Cyber Jaya. Um, see, there's one meetup coming up soon. By the end of March, Kim and I in ACAD, there's a data analytics meetup. So it will be talking about how to do machine learning and data analytics, like sentiment analysis. So the speakers are from PictoChart and people that do data analytics, data science. You can check it out um, with ACAT. It's by the end of this month. Yeah. Okay. Any more shout outs? Hiring, no hirings, no openings. Okay, never mind. So, take attendance. Last time I forgot to take attendance. So, this time, come here to write your name and your email because the venue um, sponsor would like to know who comes to this event. Okay. So, uh, Thank you for being here. See you in the next meetup. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.